Hi, I'm Kyle with DIY Auto Homeschool and today we're continuing our discussion on emission systems. Next up in line is the PCV system, which holds its place as the oldest emission system put in place mandated by law on uh, US automobiles. Uh, years and years before it was mandated, they had crankcase ventilation systems, which were just, you know, uh, CVS. Um, and the way they did those, the majority of them started off as what they called a road draft t tube. And it would come off of a, uh, a portion of the crankcase or uh, the block or is connected to the crankcase or at the valve cover. And it was just a tube that went down and into the open air. And as you were driving, the draft of the you know, driving down the road would draw those vapors from the crankcase out and then they had an inlet side, you know, sometimes filtered up by the uh, oil fill and then eventually they put it uh, like in front of the incoming air uh, from the fan so that it would have kind of a forced flow. But uh, the need came up and I believe uh, it started in World War II when they had automobiles uh, and, and tanks that would have to go through deep water. Uh, and they could not have an open tube because they were not traveling fast enough to keep any, you know, prevent any water from just going up that tube and getting in the engine, which would not be a good thing. So uh, the PCV system was created, the Positive Crankcase Ventilation System, and it's gone minor, minor changes since it was first invented, but at its core it still does the exact same thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look on the whiteboard here at uh, the way the system works and walk through some of the logic behind it. And then we're going to look at some of the hard parts so you can understand how they function. So the idea is you have crankcase uh, pressure builds up because of blow-by. Now blow-by or blow-by gases are gases that escape past the piston rings uh, on the you know, combustion cycle of the engine. Now, this is a piston here, and these right here are the rings, which are, they're actually what seal this piston inside the cylinder. And let me see, they've got gaps in them, which also lead to it because they compress, and they're what ride against the cylinder wall. You got two compression rings, and you got your oil control ring here. But that is that's one of the hard parts we're going to look at there. That this is the piston that actually travels up and down in the cylinder and uh, gases partially because of these gaps because even though you don't want the gaps lined up you know it's going to flow down into this open area come over to this this gap and then this gap you're going to get a, a small amount of flow uh, as it goes through here into the crankcase and the crankcase it is not designed to hold that kind of pressure. So if you did not have a method of getting rid of those, that pressure and those gases, they build up and they'll blow out the seals on the, uh, on like the oil pan gasket, valve cover gaskets, front and rear main seal. Those seals were never designed to hold that kind of pressure. And this pressure comes from the combustion cycle. So, uh, it, or the combustion stroke as it pushes past the ring. So it can build up high pressure if it's not vented and it'll push those seals right out. So to take care of this, we have to send that pressure somewhere. So the best place to send that pressure is right out through the PCB valve into the intake. Now you can't have a straight open, just you know, straight tube from the intake right to the valve cover, which is where they access the crankcase because the crankcase is the area that surrounds the rotating assembly of the crankshaft all the way up through the drain back tubes into the valve cover area, all of that. If you applied engine vacuum straight to that with no way of uh, having more airflow in, you would draw a vacuum on the crankcase and you don't want to draw a vacuum on the crankcase. So what they do is they have a valve that controls the flow under different load and engine speed and I'll, I'll show you in a moment how that how, how that works and how that does it and it will draw those gases out and so that you don't run this into a vacuum they have a fresh air side and this fresh air side comes from the intake air after the mass airflow sensor and if it's 
uh, that's on a mass airflow system. If it's a speed density system, uh, they don't, it doesn't matter, it just has to be filtered. It could have its own little filter, just come from behind the filter, it would act as any other filtered airflow into the engine. Uh, but the reason we have it come after the mass airflow sensor is because even though this portion of air comes down through the tube into the valve cover, through the crankcase and pushes an equal amount of gases out, it is still metered air because it finds its way back into the intake and that's how you don't get you don't get uh, issues of having unmetered air flowing in through the PCV valve because it is metered because it comes after the mass airflow sensor and like I said on a speed density system it just has to be filtered that's all because it'll act like any other airflow into the intake manifold so how does this PCV valve control it's uh, control the airflow or the gas flow based on engine speed and engine load. Well, as we know, you have engine vacuum applied to this hose. And the thing about engine vacuum is it's not constant. It changes based on engine speed and engine load, what the throttle plate, uh, what position the throttle plate's in. So I'm going to switch the camera over and we're going to take a look at a PCV valve and how it works and how it does the job that it's supposed to. Okay, this is a PCV valve for a system similar to what we have set up there. Now, I took this one and I cut it open so we can take a look inside and see how it works. So, the construction of it is pretty simple. Uh, we'll take it apart here. It's got a small little washer down at the bottom or a little sealant that sits inside little uh, indents. So, I don't want to pull that out, but it's just like a little washer. And that is for this. Uh, to sit against and seal or kind of seal and Where it controls the flow here is right along this taper and uh, I'll show you how it does that is it sits right inside here that taper does and uh, As this moves up You can see how it's got a bunch of extra room right there. I'm not even holding it straight How it's got a bunch of room right there and then as that taper comes into it, it's got less room. So here's the idea is it's got a spring. And I'm sorry, it's hard for me to make sure I keep this in, in shot here. It's got a spring that sits down around this. And that spring is going to be forcing it downward. And this sits up on top, cups the top of that spring. So it works just like that. Now this sits down inside here, and this kind of, if I can get it back in there, oh goodness, let me push this down there where it sits. These things weren't designed to be cut open. So as I said, when this sits here just like this, that under spring pressure, that valve is closed or pretty much closed. It's set down over there. Uh, and that's what it's going to be like with the engine off just sitting there not doing anything. So what happens when we start it up, this side right here is connected to engine vacuum. Now at an idle, engine vacuum is high because this, the, the intake valves are still open to the cylinders. They're still trying to draw air in, but the throttle plate is closed. So we don't have... Uh, we don't have the ability for as much to flow, so it pulls the intake into a vacuum as it's trying to draw more air into the engine. So, at, with the throttle closed is when you're going to have your highest vacuum. So when you start this up at idle, it's going to draw this upward. And as you can see, that starts to close that up a little bit. It doesn't have as much of an opening available. And as you hit the gas, you go higher RPMs or uh, higher load, even lower RPMs, but with the throttle plate wide open, the, the engine vacuum is not as strong, so it loses the battle to that spring a little, and it shuttles this valve down, and now you can see there's more area for the gases to flow through. So, at, uh, at low engine speeds, with the throttle closed, uh, you know, idle or deceleration, this pulls this up and it seals it off almost all the way. Where there, I'm sorry, it's hard to hold this here. It seals it off. And then as the 
vacuum starts to drop, it loses the fight to that spring and it opens this up for more gases to flow through. So one more time here, let me, let me try to show you. This is at a, a high vacuum state with the you know, engine idle, just started up or deceleration. And then this is at a lower vacuum state, which is your higher RPM. So looking at this illustration now, you can see how the PCV valve is the controlling factor in this whole system. It is what controls the amount of engine vacuum, or it doesn't control the amount of engine vacuum, sorry. It uses the amount of engine vacuum to control the amount of gases that it flows. Because at, like I said, at your uh, lower speeds which are with your higher vacuum, you are not going to have the blow-by gases that you're going to have at higher engine speeds. So once you get up to higher engine speeds and heavier loads, loads are, you know, when you're on the gas hard, you're going to run the throttle plate open, allow more air through, but the engine may not be spinning as fast because it's working harder. That's going to drop the vacuum inside the intake because it's not as hard for that intake to get air into it now that you have the throttle plate open. And that is going, like I said, drop the vacuum and you'll have more blow by under load and high, sp and high engine speed, which is when you'll have your lower vacuum. So when you're gonna have more blow by, you're gonna have a valve that's open to allow more to flow through. And that is how the PCV system removes the vapors from the crankcase before they can uh, react with the oil and cause sludge, which will cause damage to the babbit on the bearings, uh, all of the, you know, the. Uh, the journals on the crankshaft, everything, uh, sludge in the oil is a bad thing and the gases pooling up in there is what leads to sludge. It reacts with the oil and it creates sludge. The other thing it will do is, since they are largely made up of hydrocarbons, it will dilute the oil as it has a, a, the ability to condense and it's basically like putting uh, hydrocarbon or fuel into the, the oil and it dilutes it. And then it does not lubricate the way it's supposed to, it doesn't hold pressure the way it's supposed to, and in general does not act the way you want oil to act. So I hope that this video has helped you understand what a PCV system does and a little bit of how it works. Um, thank you for taking the time to watch it, and I will see you guys in the next video.